Welcome to Opalescent Television. I am in Zug in Switzerland in the office of Amplitude Capital. Together with Carsten Schroeder, he is one of the founders and the chief executive officer of Amplitude Capital. Carsten, 2008 was certainly the best year for the CTA and managed futures industry. And then the following year, 2009, was probably one of the worst years for the industry. How do you explain what was going on in those two years? Yes, I mean, in 2008, we've seen amazing opportunities for CTAs. If we just maybe spend a couple of minutes just generally explaining when does the CTA work. We work on the uh, herd mentality that we can observe in the markets. And uh, obviously when there is stress or high emotions, you have a stronger herd mentality. And that was the case in, in 2008. The liquidity, the subprime crisis, people got very concerned. And we saw extreme market movements, in particular towards the end of the year when the equity markets came down, when we had um, very extreme movements also on the bond markets. And that was the time when, generally speaking, the medium to long-term CTAs in particular had a fantastic environment. Don't forget that there were basically four trades that everyone had on. Those trades were um, basically being long on equities for the first half of the year and then towards the end being short equities, short commodities and long bonds. And these four big trends generated all the profits in medium to long term trading. So that was the environment that everyone was looking for in the CTA industry. 2009 was a bit of the contrary because Generally speaking, volatility dried out. We did not see a lot of big movements in the market. So the overall industry had had a difficult environment. Although 2009, the situation was different for the short-term CTAs than it was for the medium to long-term CTAs. For short-term trading, equity markets still provided ample of opportunity. But the bond markets, due to the quantitative easing, had a negative performance contribution in that year, which was in particular very difficult because traditionally bond markets are extremely attractive for short-term trading. And in 2009, it was not only that you were missing out on the positive contribution from that asset class, but you were basically facing quite a severe loss. And that has drawn a lot of short-term traders into negative territory. Whereas for medium to long-term trading, it was more the lack of the opportunity. There were no big trends. And energy markets were slightly difficult because the monthly volatility actually dropped below the daily one, which for someone that has a multi-month holding period clearly provides a difficult environment and that was observable since May last year. So that would sum up a little bit the return characteristics of 08 and 09 for the industry and certainly right to be said that these were two, um, two extreme years. Carsten, some people believe that CTAs and managed futures are a risky asset class. What is your view on that? It's actually quite surprising that we get confronted with that perception on a quite regular basis. Because if you look at the actual numbers, CTAs as a strategy within the hedge fund asset class are one of the most efficient strategies. So when you take the sharp ratio, even the absolute return of an index, you may take the, the Euro hedge index, for example, and compare numbers to other strategies since... 2000, CTAs usually come out number one and number two. So I'm quite surprised that the strategy is perceived as a high risk investment. Now, I think we should talk a little bit about risk, what risk components you should be looking at and how, how CTAs fit in there. So we have the strategy risk as with any other strategy. And for a CTA, traditionally, a whipsawing market environment, a range bound market environment or low volatility are not very good which is an environment where usually the rest of your investments are doing reasonably well. And that's why the diversification aspect of a CTA is so strong. Secondly, you have operational risk. A CTA is predominantly lose a lot of technology. So that's important in an investment consideration to make sure you've done the proper due diligence when it comes to operations. Then you have liquidity risk, which was not really in the focus pre-2008. And I guess what 2008 has shown that there is a range of investments that you can make where when you look at the track record, you do not really see the risk that is involved because there is a tail and there is a premium that you get compensated for having an investment that is very illiquid. And people need to be aware of the fact that they are holding something that they might not be able to liquidate 
under stress for the price they are seeing right now, and that that was the whole, you know, that was the whole big issue in the crisis. There was an asset liability mismatch with a lot of investors, and they were forced to sell assets that they actually couldn't really sell. So I guess that is something that really needs to be considered going forward. And on that front, CTAs have a clear advantage because it's the most liquid and the most transparent strategy. We all trade futures on highly liquid markets. Most of the CTAs offer weekly liquidity with no restrictions, at least what we do. It's becoming more and more industry standard. And also the implementation of managed accounts is the easiest one on CTAs, which post Madoff has become a very important consideration on the investor side, that you own your assets, that you have maximum transparency, and with the CTA that's very easy to achieve, because exchange cleared products, allocation amongst various managed accounts is pretty straightforward, and to that extent I would actually say, and I'm not saying that because I'm one of the CTA managers, but just on a very objective consideration that it's actually below average risky investment, given all these factors that you would have to consider. You know, there's a general risk that you have in a business. There's people risk. CTAs are companies that heavily rely on research. So you need to look into that and make sure that the research is properly managed, that the key people are uh, properly incentivized and are still working in the business. And I guess that's, that's probably another important consideration you have to make. Gustin, let's talk a bit about strategy risk here. I know a lot of investors, they take some time, if at all, they get at some point comfortable with CTAs and managed futures. And often what I hear is, oh no, it's a black box, I'm unable to understand it. How do you explain your strategy or CTAs or managed futures to these investors? But here's a black box to me, means something where you don't really see what's going on inside which is not transparent, which is hard to understand. And I would say this is actually quite a surprising description of something that acts according to a strict rule base, because that's what a CTA is. In the research process, you build the formulas, you define the risk components, you build the, the portfolio construction. And there's a clear set of rules under which the actual trading takes place, which is fully automated, which uh, is executed by the machines, by the computers, and therefore there is no discretion, there is no override, there is no flexibility. Whereas the decision-making process of a human brain is far more complex. Basically the trader looks at a similar set of information, but on top of that there is this discretionary emotional component that plays a role. And that is a very complex decision because it's not only the emotions that you see or that you may perceive from the market, it's also your personal mindset, the personal situation. And we all remember the Amaranth case where you had a trader that had already made a lot of money. So to that extent, the his perceived risk in betting the bank was very low because the worst thing that could happen is to lose his job, but he was anyways well off. So it was not a very well balanced situation. and. Um, that is something that you need to consider or that you need to look at when you have discretionary trading. How are those people incentivized? What is actually their motivation in putting this trade on? I can understand that investors usually love to hear a story instead of looking at statistics. And because it's, it's just easier to get comfortable with. But don't forget, we have trends in the market like we have anywhere else in the world. We have trends in fashion. We have actually trends when it comes to politics. That's what human behavior is all about. And what a CTA or does, or a futures fund does, is we try on a statistical basis to say, yes, there's a significance in terms of working with those trends. And there, there is a range of funds that have been operating for years and years very successfully. So there is a proof of concept. And to that extent, I'll try to, to get investors more comfortable by showing them or by explaining to them the market environments in which a CTA performs and the market environments that are more difficult for this strategy to perform. And that's, by the way, quite different from a long-term to a short-term trader. And uh, I would say that this gives them much more predictability in terms of what your investment would perform like under certain market environments in comparison to when you invest into a more discretionary style. And I believe 2008 was a great opportunity for the industry to actually prove 
that it will add the necessary diversification to the portfolio and that it will deliver the returns. And last but not least, the point I want to make is humans tend to be very, very comfortable to rely on technology when human lives are on the line.